Hello everyone, this is an in-depth guide on New York 1 Descent. In this video, I will show you guys the best team composition for this specific map, all of the item spawn locations, all of the virus sample locations, as well as some tricks to help you beat this map. Now that you know what you're in for, let's drag it up! It's gonna stop his enemies with his dragon power Dragon teeth, dragon tail, burning dragon fire Real live wire, American dragon The best team composition for Descent is a Masking Stim Medic a MGL or heavy weapon focused Hellraiser, a Slasher, and a Masking Grenade Fixer. I'll show you where each class shines in the playthrough. If the Fixer is level 25 or higher, they should take the Shadow Walker skill. Right off the bat, we have this office space where you can just mask the entire team and get to the elevator if your team wants to speedrun. Make sure you wait till you get about to here before throwing it to make sure that the masking duration lasts until you get to the elevator. However, this section of the map is very easily stealthable without wasting equipment charges. Another reason why you may not want to go straight to the elevator in this section is because there is a virus sample location in this section of the map. In this back office room, there is a secondary weapon spawn location on this table. There is also an equipment charge spawn location in this little couch area. Here you see there's a stalker on the right as well as another secondary weapon spawn location. This one usually spawns a uh, grenade launcher or flare gun so it's pretty useful in the early game. And then once you get through this tiny little hallway, usually there is a stalker on the right. Right there. And then sometimes there's a stalker in here too, either on the right corner or behind this pillar, so be careful with that one. And there's usually a box over here, or sometimes there's just a heavy weapon and not a box. And then once you make your way through this location, on the right side there is a virus sample location. Here's another lurker spot. On the left, there is another lurker. And inside this room, there's also a weapon spawn location. This is the room that the virus sample spawns in. It's in this little corner behind this dead body in the couch. As we move on, this room on the right has a box in it sometimes. And then behind this wall, either on the left or right side, there is a... Uh, there's a lurker sometimes. And then again, be careful of the elevator as when it opens, a bull can spawn from it. So make sure you have uh, a slash around your team that can easily deal with that. Uh, you can also have a fixer with the payload rifle skill, where they just spawn with the payload rifle and then they can just shoot twice and leave. Once you go down the elevator, you cannot go back up, which is why you want to make sure you get that virus sample if you are sure you're not going to take damage, which will give you extra credits 
or if you're playing on insane or extreme mode, you'll get extra challenge coins. Here's some more item spawns. Here's a boxing spawn here sometimes. And then in this store behind the counter, there's usually a lurker. There are also lots of heavy weapon spawns. There are two right behind this counter right here, and there's also one on the table when you come in. There's a med kit right there, and then on the chair in the on that back or the left side of that store, there's also sometimes an equipment charge, but it wasn't there on this playthrough. There are generally lots of heavy weapons down here as well. The on either side. In the middle of the bridge. There's a lurker spawn location right there. This chair has a secondary weapon spawn location. It's a heavy weapon spawn location here. And here is another weapon cache box. Sometimes a weapon box is over there too, or sometimes there's uh, just some weapons laying out and not in the box that you can leave. A special note here, there are multiple locations where zombies spawn from. You can stop them from spawning by standing right in front of them. So there's one here, there's one at the bottom behind these vending machines right here. And the other two are on the opposite end near this store right here and at the top of the escalators above it. So if you have a full squad of four, it's really good to position all people there before you start the, the fight by shooting down those stars or shooting any of the zombies at the bottom. So I'm going to position myself over here so I can shoot one of these stars while stopping the zombies from spawning on this spot. Once you hear the roaring and that the zombies are moving, you can move away from that gate and the zombies won't spawn anymore. And then a Hellraiser is good for this because you can clear these zombies really quickly and it'll stop extra waves of zombies spawning from those gates. You only need about like 8 or 9 grenade launcher shots and you'll clean them up really well. Be careful, there's a lurker spawn location down there. Sometimes you can just jump straight up at you. All right, this area is also kind of another hold location, but this time you can get some uh, defense kits. There is generally three to four defense kits, so make sure you grab them all. There is a lurker spawn location right there. So go ahead and set up all of the defense kits. You can speed up the preparation defense cycle by going up to the front gate and holding the E button. The auto defense turrets are really good for aiming in the back and getting the few zombies so you don't have to turn around and focus on them. And you can just mow down all the zombies that are climbing on the fences. Explosives are really helpful, It'll get rid of a lot of them. RPGs are really great, uh, having a Hellraiser also with the uh, MGL is also really good. So you really do want a Hellraiser for most of the part of this mission. There's also a virus sample spawn location over here, but if you 
don't already have one, make sure you wait until the end of the defense position uh, part of this section to, to grab the fire sample so you don't take damage and, and break your fire sample container. If you're playing in a squad, make sure one person's on the heavy weapon and somebody else is defending that person. There are two cars in this section that are explodable that can kill, help you kill the zombies. There's one in the far back near the boss over there and one closer in the front. Be careful of using this heavy machine gun because you can't reach all the way to the far right side. zombies from the back side. Besides regular zombies, there are also a bunch of special zombies that usually come from the back, so be careful of them as well. Alright, now that the defense is over, uh, go ahead and grab more ammo. Be careful of the lurker spawn location. Uh, if you are a Hellraiser or just anybody who's using uh, explosive heavy weapons like RPG or MGLs, uh, make sure to grab uh, weapons like the heavy machine gun, uh, heavy assault shotgun, or the payload rifle for the next spot because the subway is kind of small and hard to shoot any uh, explosives around. Uh, the payload rifle is kind of okay as long as you control your fire and only use it for bulls that are kind of far away. Don't forget the virus sample that's down here if you don't already have one. Because of how narrow the subway station rooms can be, having a couple of people in the squad with shotguns is really great. So if there are any laying around, make sure to grab them before continuing. But also make sure to have a couple of people equipped with longer range weapons to deal with the screamers. The next part is generally pretty calm, but it is not completely safe, so do not completely lower your guard. There are lots of loot spots in this area as well as the third and final virus sample location near this flipped over truck. You can only get two virus samples from the spawn locations. The third virus sample can be obtained by knocking an exploder on the ground by shooting it in the legs and making its LEDs turn yellow and then finishing it off with a melee strike. Once you get into the subway, you can kind of just hold this hallway. It's really safe, you'll likely not take any damage from zombies. Just line up and form a firing squad and you can defend pretty easily. The zombies from the subway will just come to you, so don't bother running over there to go save the, the train driver. Here's one of the lurker spawn locations. 
There's another one on this opposite end too, as well as a loot box over here. Also because of these tight locations, the slasher is really great for this area. The masking grenade fixer and the masking stim medic are really great for this one because of the narrow hallways. It, sometimes it can be hard to get outside and especially if there is a screamer spawning multiple zombies after you, it is really important to get out there quickly and deal with the screamer. So the mask grenade fixer usually deals with that. There are four doors on the, the top floor for to find the boxes, and then there I are, I believe, three on the lower floor. This room you can kind of hold in between these two doors that you can open and close, um, because they will only come from one direction. However, if you don't want to go back outside the long way, there is a switch or a lever that can open the doors on the lower floor to let you get back to the train. Sometimes there's a med kit that spawns right there. Uh, so here's the lever that you can pull to get back to the train really quickly instead of going out through the top floor. I'm only kind of opening that door because I am playing this on single player and I want to get that second box, but if you're playing with a squad or at least uh, with an one other person, they can grab the box and you guys can head out the top floor pretty easily. Uh, but even if you do open that door, you can still fall back to the upstairs area where you just kind of started the subway section and just hold zombies there while one or two people are going and running around grabbing the boxes. Usually the slasher and the masking medic will be the ones to do that. Uh, for horde spawns, uh, again, you can still hold here even though you don't have the doors to hold the zombies back. You can have this little window ledge to kind of hold the zombies at bay. The other great thing about having the Hellraiser, Slasher, Medic, and Fixer combo is pretty much every one of those classes has a get out of trouble jail kind of card with their equipment charges such as the C4 that can lure zombies away for 5 seconds, the Slasher can stun things that get too close for a pretty long time, and of course the Masking Grenade and Stims from the Fixer and Medic are really good for down here as well. Sometimes in the back room there are some tier 3 weapons. And there's this uh, pharmacy room over here with more boxes. Sometimes there is a uh, loot crate as well, besides just the uh, besides just the objective boxes.
There's another door to the right inside where that screamer was, and there's a lurker over there behind that corner, so be careful of that one. When you play this mission on higher difficulties, uh, right now I'm playing it on hard, if you're playing it on higher difficulties, or you're playing it with more people, you will be required to obtain more supply crates for the train driver, so just be aware of that. If you're playing on insane mode or extreme mode, you won't have your minimap, and if you're playing on extreme mode, you won't have the objective icons right here that tells you which door to go through. You can unlock this padlock, but I don't recommend doing that unless you are really in trouble because if you want to hold at that top staircase place where you spawn from, you don't want to open it because zombies can then kind of flank you. Uh, be careful, sometimes there's a lurker inside this uh, doorway. And some zombies can also be spawned inside this room as well, so clear make sure to clear them out first. Alright, that is the last box. Alright, once you give the last box, you can just leave. I like to go in this back cart most of the time because the rest of the party, if they go in the front cart, some of them are a bit trigger happy, in the, especially if they're randoms, they, they might just kill you. If you have a virus sample, that's a bad idea. Also, if there's an exploder that comes last minute, they can still blow up and damage you through the doors, so coming through here in the back, they cannot do that. And that is it. This mission is pretty easy, goes by fast if you have a Hellraiser to clear those defense points. That's all for this guide. I hope you guys liked it. Let me know if you prefer this style where it's a full gameplay video versus the cut up versions where I'm constantly talking and just teleporting to each spawn location with editing magic. If this video helped you beat this map on extreme, definitely leave a like and subscribe for my future guides on how to beat all of the episodes. We finally passed 800 subs. We're so close to that 1000 subscriber goal. Thank you all for your support, thank you for watching, and remember, I will always love you.